Is Warren Buffett holding on to Coca-Cola a mistake? I've had a lot of people ask me saying, why didn't he sell it? Why, when Warren Buffett saw the price of Coca-Cola rise up so much from his buying point in 1988 all the way up to 1998, why didn't he sell the stock? It would have been so obviously undervalued and the subsequent performance of the stock down over 53%, I think 53% between 1988 and 2004, and then just fairly mediocre returns from that point on, why hasn't he offloaded this company? Why hasn't he reallocated the capital, and why isn't he making more intelligent investments going forward? Let me preface this by saying I'm certainly not smarter than Warren Buffett. Um, and even if I was claiming to be so, I certainly don't have the track, or, the track record to back that up. What I want to explore in this, this video is more about why he didn't sell, why he might be holding on to the company, um, and the different stages within an investor's life cycle. Because investors within different points of their life cycle, whether you're just starting out investing, whether you're a mature investor, you have different goals and different objectives and different things you're trying to, do, trying to do, whether you're trying to grow or whether you're trying to protect your capital. This is perhaps the single most criticized point I've seen with Buffett. Why hasn't he sold Coca-Cola? Coca-Cola, we know, is a mature, profitable, firmly entrenched, financially stable company, a staple that's, going to be, that's been around for hundreds of years and I will likely continue to be around for hundreds of years. And yet despite the quality of the company, it hasn't been growing. It hasn't been compounding rapidly over time. It's just a steady, mature, staple business that's not creating massive, massive returns. So as an investor, why would you want to own it? There's companies out there growing far faster. And obvious companies. Companies that Buffett himself already owns. You look at a company like Apple. Over the next 10, 15, 20 years, what do you think is going to deliver superior returns? Coca-Cola or Apple? Which one? To me, I believe the answer is obvious. I think it's very easy to see that Apple is likely going to outperform Coca-Cola going forward over the next 10 to 15 years. And Buffett knows that. That's why 40% of Buffett's portfolio is Apple. So why hasn't he offloaded this Coca-Cola stake if this is effectively dead money, as some people are saying? Well, I think it comes down to less to a question of business quality and what's going to perform the best going forward and trying to appreciate your capital at the most rapid rate. And it comes down to more an idea of that when it comes to investing, Different stages in your investment life cycle, just as with your general life, you have different objectives. Early on, when you're an investor, you're trying to grow. You're trying to grow that capital aggressively. You're buying growth companies. You're buying companies that are going to appreciate rapidly over time so you can build that wealth. Now, ask yourself the question, is Warren Buffett a young investor? Is Warren Buffett someone who's just getting started? Is Warren Buffett a novice in this field? No. Warren Buffett is the field. Warren Buffett is investing. <laughs> so I... He's certainly not a young investor, and so naturally his objectives within the investment space and how he allocates capital within his portfolio is going to differentiate from that of a new investor. He's not trying to appreciate his capital as rapidly as possible. You look at the amount of cash the man has on hand. So much of what Warren has been doing over the past five and maybe even ten years has been more about sustaining the financial stability of the business whilst growing it out consistently rather than executing on massive, massive growth. There's a reason Berkshire has underperformed the S&P, albeit by a small margin, over the past five years. Returned only 80% relative to around 83% of the S&P 500. It's because the man is no longer investing so aggressively to build out his operations and expand rapidly over time. Partly because of the struggles that come with the scale he's at right now. But also because that's simply not the mentality he's got. He's not a young guy trying to rapidly grow things. He's trying to sustain what he has and create a financial fortress that will last long, long, long after he's gone. And to that end, Coca-Cola actually becomes a fairly favorable stock to buy. He started buying Coke back in around 1988. 1988, around $2 a share or so. Correct me if I'm wrong, I think the price was around that in 1988. And then he held all the way to present. Massive run-up in 2001, stock price appreciated all the way, actually, let's double check. 1998, stock price appreciated to $43 a share. $43 a share from $2 a share back in 1988. Massive, massive appreciation. And now people see that appreciation and that's all they really think about. They, th they see the appreciation in the stock price and they think that's the core thing he should have sold. It hasn't appreciated beyond that point, beyond that. And so Buffett's making a mistake. What they're missing with this is something that's quite obvious with Coca-Cola. I think that most of the investors who buy Coca-Cola today are actually buying it for this purpose. And that's the dividends. Think about the dividend income that Buffett is receiving from Coca-Cola. Last year, dividend income was in excess of $650 million. 
$650 million in dividends of a single holding. Now, if you're investing with the objective to maintain your wealth, not grow it rapidly, just maintain it, sustain it, $650 million in dividends from a stable company, a tremendous yield on your original stock price, isn't that an attractive thing? If you were Warren Buffett, if you had built, spent your life, almost a hundred year life spending your life building a financial empire, and you either had the objective to sit back and receive almost an excess of half a billion dollars in dividends every single year from a Coca-Cola holding, or attempt to sell that holding, reallocate that capital to make marginal returns over time, which are only really going to account for a small part of the total return associated with your company, what would you do? Would you sell out? Would you change your positions? Would you double down on, on high growth companies? No. You'd sit back. You'd sustain. You'd let the empire build out. You'd let the free cash flow flow in from this holding and you wouldn't be stressing about trying to buy into new companies growing faster. Is Coca-Cola the optimal investment decision? Is it going to yield the best long-term returns for Berkshire and Buffett himself? No. I don't believe so. But when you take into account Buffett's objectives, the objective of I am trying to preserve my wealth, I'm trying to hold my legacy. I'm trying to receive free cash flow in the most easy way possible and allow that free cash flow to reinvest in other aspects of the business, creating a financial fortress, a machine. Then that, and then in that mindset, with that approach, Coca-Cola fits the portfolio. Do I believe wrong? Do I, do I believe Buffett was wrong not to sell the holding? No. Buffett can do whatever he wants. Buffett is in such a position that I think he is almost exempt of criticism when it comes to the investment field, and he's in a completely different investment position relative to most other investors. Not only by virtue of the magnitude amounts of capital he has, but also the objectives he has in place. Very few investors have made it to almost 100 years old. And so naturally, your, your, objective, your, your investment objectives shift over time. And that's indicative of this holding. That's why he's been holding Coca-Cola. And now, if you want to value Coca-Cola... If you want to think about, is the stock undervalued, is it overvalued? Is he still seeing long-term upside potential to it? I don't think so. I think even if you put in fairly aggressive growth rates, growth rates around 10%, which I think is optimistic for Coca-Cola, given, given its inherent maturity, growth rate of 10% going forward over the next decade, you only come up to a price target of 54.19. So it appears overvalued. But that doesn't matter to him. Because it's not about capital appreciation with the stock anymore. He's beyond that. He's, he's forgotten about capital appreciation stock. He could care less about the price of Coca-Cola. I only think, I think the only time Buffett would actually be concerned about the price of Coca-Cola if there was a substantial drop. And we're talking a drop 40, 50% in value. Massive, massive declines in the stock. And then he may be concerned with the price and think about adding to the position. But right now, it's just about securing the business, holding down the fortress he's already built. And to that end, Coca-Cola is absolutely fine. Before we criticize someone, before we call them out on something they've done, I think we should always put ourselves in their shoes. Think about their position. What's their thinking? What are their objectives at the time? And when you put yourself in Buffett's shoes when it comes to the Coca-Cola holding, then I think you gain a far superior degree of understanding of what he's trying to achieve. Maintaining wealth. Preserving capital. Not growing it. He doesn't need to grow it anymore. The man's worth in excess of $100 billion. If you're still freaking out about trying to build your wealth at that point, then well... Well, that's also, that's kind of impressive, but, but it's, it's impressive, but it's also, he's at the end of that game. He's finished the game. He's beat the game of investing and sitting back on a Coca-Cola position, having half a billion dollars in dividends roll in every single year. When you've done that, when you've achieved that, I don't think it should, re, I don't think it should draw you any criticism. He's the greatest investor of all time. And despite the, the underperformance of this Coca-Cola holding relative to the market, I don't think that title changes at all. So this criticism associated with this holding, I don't believe is justified. And I think given the objectives he has as an investor, the holding is absolutely fine. If you enjoyed this video, perhaps you learned something more about Coca-Cola as a stock or as a company, or Buffett's philosophy as a whole, and how mature investors act differently to young investors, then please drop us a like down below, hit subscribe if you haven't already. If there's a company you want me to talk about in the next video, then please just comment down below and I'll see if I can get onto it. But until then, thank you, and I'll see you in the next one.